everyone, how are you to this orientation session for the recent batch uh, for ACCA performance management, which is basically relating to uh, March 23 attempt and also uh, June 23 attempt. So I welcome you all to this orientation session. This is your instructor is Van Mania. In today's session, uh, we will be discussing very important things in relation to the December 22 attempt, which is very in important for all the upcoming students. Before I start, let me give you a quick introduction about myself. My teaching experience uh, has been more than 15 years and I'm teaching papers PM, FM and APM. <clears throat> uh, I have conducted lots and lots of webinars for ACCA. Uh, Pakistan but under the brand name of P2P. So uh, I've conducted eight webinars for uh, ACCA Pakistan for performance management uh, and six webinars for uh, ACCA advanced performance management. Other than this, <coughs> other than this, uh, we, we do conduct webinars every quarter from our own Wi-Fi platform. Those are available on the YouTube channel. Many of my students have secured positions uh, in these papers uh, nationwide and uh, worldwide. So <clears throat> now after this introduction, it's now time to move towards uh, the important discussion. But once again, if you're new to the session, if you don't know me, uh, please note down my number. This is the number you <coughs> need to save. Uh, and you can contact me anytime for any problem for anything that you need to ask. Let me tell you a brief about Wifi's platform. Wifi is an ACCA Gold approved learning partner uh, for online delivery. We are providing ACCA uh, tuitions to ACCA students globally uh, in 100 plus countries since last three years. Our mission is very simple to be uh, the best in providing tuitions and giving best quality education to our students globally. Uh, for that purpose, we do have a very good methodology and I'll share that methodology with you people today so that <coughs> students not only pass, but they pass with good numbers and they do have the confidence before they go into the examination. So, <coughs> Now, the first question that I normally ask from every student every time is about the paper performance management. Is performance management a hard exam? So the answer to this is, uh, yeah, people would normally say, yeah, it's a very difficult paper. It's, it's a hard paper. And those who have given the paper in December 22, and unfortunately, they were not able to pass. So obviously, they would consider this to be a hard exam. <clears throat> but honestly speaking, it is not a hard paper <clears throat> because if you uh, ensure that your approach and, 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 and you work in the right direction, you need to work hard. It doesn't mean that it's a hard paper. If you work hard in the right direction, you can easily pass the paper. So the point is working hard is extremely important. Don't consider paper to be hard just ensure you work hard in order to pass the examination okay <clears throat> now december 22 passing ratio always there is a big big debate about the passing ratio so the passing ratio for december 22 uh, is 43 percent for acca performance management so when i say it's 43 percent uh, <clears throat> it clearly means that uh, passing ratio is better. Honestly speaking, it's better compared to what it used to be in the previous attempts. But I can uh, proudly say that WIFI's passing ratio uh, of our students is above this global passing ratio, which actually is a really good sign uh, from a student's perspective. So, uh, as you, as I always mention that the focus is on providing best quality education and support. That's why our students do pass. But again, I would say don't consider this passing ratio uh, and don't 
uh, consider the paper to be difficult. It's a very good passing ratio. The passing ratio has gone up for performance management from the last attempt. So it's a good thing. It's a positive thing. Uh, going up for PM is really good, which means I hope this continues in the next attempt and the students who are appearing in March, they pass as well. Now, <clears throat> I will not go into the details of the paper structure because I, I know that students right now who are listening to me uh, in this recent orientation session obviously have a very good idea about the paper structure and the paper method and what section A, section B and section C is and the syllabus of the paper. The point that I want to make is uh, that why students fail. So I'll start my discussion like this. As you know, the paper includes section A, which is uh, uh, which includes 15 objective test questions having a weightage of 30 marks each, followed by section B, which basically includes uh, scenario-based questions. There are three scenario-based questions, and each question is a one where there is a scenario followed by five objective test questions. Then you have section C, which is known as constructive response questions. These are the questions uh, in which you know, there, there is the use of spreadsheet and word, and this is of 40 marks, so it requires a different skill set compared to section A and B. The main area of the syllabus includes advanced costing technique, decision making, budgeting and control, and the heart of F5, I always say, performance measurement, uh, and there is also information technology and system which actually comes in theory. Now, the point that I will first emphasize and will make the basis here is 1.8 minutes per mark. So I'll use this for my discussion uh, when I move on towards different section-wise problems that students do uh, when they give the paper. So it's three hours examination. In those three hours, you need to solve uh, 100 marks, which means if I say, uh, three hours, so that makes 180 minutes. If I divide this with 100, so uh, it clearly gives me a very simple answer of 1.8 minutes per mark. Now, 1.8 minutes per mark is basically an average which student must keep in their mind when they are solving this paper, uh, when they are solving skill paper, uh, and this helps you to plan things well, this helps you to solve according to time management. So when I say 1.8 minutes, now I'll use this in my different examples when I move on to section wise issues. So the first <coughs> key thing that we're discussing is about section A and that is why do students fail? Yeah, I know you are interested in knowing why students fail. Because you know students, they do attempt since we uh, since Monday when when results were out. Uh, I have myself answered so hundreds of queries in relation to uh, different papers and PM, FM, and APM. And students are like, we don't know why we failed. We don't know what is going wrong. We have given a third attempt or fourth attempt. And uh, these are the marks we are scoring in mid 40s uh, or 30s and not sure where we are doing wrong. The point is <coughs> that first of all, listen, you were not up to the mark. You cannot say that I, yeah, you did the hard work, I'm sure, but you were not up to the mark. That is why you were not able to pass. So you have to accept, you have to admit that there are problems, there are issues, there are things that you need to sort out ASAP. <coughs> Once you are able to figure out those issues, then you will work on those. But the question is, how will you figure out? How a student will figure out where the problems are, where they are doing things wrong? So I need to pinpoint certain common problems relating to section A of the exam, section B of the exam, and section C of the exam. So I'll start first with <coughs> uh, the general problems, and then I'll come to specific. First of all, the general problem is not understanding the question requirements. Now, this is very much pertaining to section C, uh, CRQ, where uh, you have uh, two CRQs, 20 marks each, and students are not able to handle, especially the narrative parts, the theoretical parts. They are not clear what the question is actually asking. So, until unless you don't understand the question requirement, your answer will not be according to what is required. 
So you must learn how to overcome this problem. And today in this session, be with me. I'll tell you how to overcome this problem. <clears throat> Secondly, the, the second problem is a continuation of the first problem. When you don't understand what is needed to be answered, your answer is not according to what is required in the question. Which means you are spending time, you are wasting time on writing something for which you will not be given marks. So definitely it is wasting your time, definitely it is affecting your performance and your chances of passing. I always say students that don't write what you know. I repeat, don't write what you know, write what is being required. We write what we know we need to write what is being asked by the examiner. So this is what you have to learn. This is what you have to keep in your mind if you have to succeed. So make sure that you do answer what is required, not what you know, okay? And it depends on how easily you have understood the question requirements. Then time management is an issue. Yeah, this remains a very, very common issue for the students. As I just figured out earlier, 1.8 minutes per mark. Why I mentioned that is people are not able to complete the paper. You know, I always say go with smart approach of solving the examination. What is a smart approach of solving paper? Smart approach means you don't have to ratify each and everything. Smart approach doesn't mean that you you study, study thoroughly, study every time. No, you need to learn the examination passing technique. Sir, what, do you, uh, what are you saying? There is a separate technique that we need to learn to pass the exams. Yes, if, even if you have covered each and everything, even you have done the practice work, but on that particular day of examination, those three hours is what will matter. Those three hours where you need to perform brilliantly. Those three hours are do or die situation for you. So you need to adopt smart paper solving approach. I will discuss few uh, of the techniques uh, under the heading of smart paper solving technique today. But first of all, this remains a challenge. One time management is an issue. Students. Uh, uh, are not able to complete the paper and lot and lots of questions I've received in these last three days where students are like we left five marks, we left 10 marks, we left 15 marks. So honestly speaking, once you leave marks, which means you are making your passing a difficult case. Reason, very simple. If you left 10 marks, which means your marking will be done from the 90 marks which means itself now 10 marks are no more for you so leaving the paper creates a lot of difficulty for the students to pass so my friends time management is what you need to really work on i'll tell you the tips to overcome and i will also discuss the smart paper solving technique as well <coughs> i don't know why you are uh, do not cover the syllabus completely. I don't know why, who comes to you in your dreams and tell you, hello, this will not come your examination. Hello, don't cover performance measurement. Don't cover not-for-profit organization. I don't know who tells you all this thing. This is all crap. Uh, yeah, that is a second thing that because of the lack of time, you start guessing yourself. So that is again your mistake. It's a professional examination. You cannot expect to uh, just, just forecast things. You cannot expect to predict things. Previously, it was a possible option for us to do, but because of the section A, B, and C now, uh, because section A and B can come from any part of the area, so this is not an easy task. If we being tutors now avoid guessing and giving the predictions, why you people leave things you have to cover entire syllabus even the first chapter the easiest chapter the theoretical chapter you must cover <coughs> you 
let, let me tell you one thing that students normally don't realize. There are certain topics of performance management. The initial ones I'm talking about like information systems and information. <clears throat> these are the sections, sorry, these are the chapters that come in your examination and we have seen that approximately four to five OTs are tested from this area, which straight away means eight to ten marks. Now, if you're guessing there in relation to these areas, you are easily losing eight to ten marks. So, my friends, you must understand this fact that covering of the entire syllabus is the most important thing. Okay? After that, yeah, very much specific to PM. Hello, my friends, you need to realize this is not F2 management accounting examination. This is performance management. This is a paper where your mindset should change. You need to step up. The focus is not on calculations here. The focus is on interpretation. What the numbers mean. Or I can say, why are we calculating these things? So the question is, what the numbers means? It's not about, okay, using high-low method, work out variable cost per unit. Here you need to decide do you need to work out variable cost per unit? Here the focus is not on calculating a material price variance. Here you need to write and explain why this variance actually came and who is responsible for that. So interpretation is important. The word is performance management. You have to evaluate and check the performance of different things in the organization. So my friends, you need to step up. Don't consider this to be a management accounting F2 examination. Okay. <clears throat> Poor technical knowledge again is due to lack of completeness in terms of syllabus where you you're not completing the things. You're not understanding the in depth areas because in PM the most challenging aspect is when examination question comes and in one question there are different topics that are tested. Now those questions are the one that creates lot of difficulty for the students when there are multiple topics tested in one question. So this will only be overcome if you practice, practice and practice. Latest examinations are basically very good, uh, 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 very good uh, example in front of you to practice and learn things better and better, okay? <clears throat> I have specifically mentioned this as a problem. Why? <clears throat> because students in theoretical OTs are struggling. Those OTs that are specifically theory based are the one where students are struggling. So for that, what needs to be done? Yeah, in, in, uh, to my students, I s always give them a few chapters. I name the chapters and I tell them to read those chapters just for better understanding, even though we have covered that on the portal. So there are certain chapters, if you read them well, you can handle the OTs well. Yes, OTs are not simple MCQs. You, you have to consider it could be multiple response, it could be <coughs> hot spot, it could be anything. So you need to prepare yourself well when it comes to OTs so that you are able to handle theoretical OTs well. And there are certain chapters that I always uh, mention uh, in my class groups and in my webinars, students should read and those who do, they really perform well. So this is basically the basic uh, general issue that I mentioned. I hope you, you must have understood the problems and just reflect now, those who are listening me, 
just reflect where you went wrong just ask yourself okay any of these issues into which i am involved if yes then you have to overcome those if yes then you have to come up with a plan and that plan will be depending on the next slides that I'll show you and you will practice according to that. So now certain tips and tricks I need to specifically tell you for different sections of the paper starting with section A first. OTs, seven types. MCQ, multiple response, uh, hotspot, hot reader question, uh, drag and drop and uh, <coughs> drop down, okay. So these are the these, these are the questions which are tested in examination including fill in the blanks. These are seven types of OTs. For OTs, listen, once you read the theoretical, especially the theoretical OTs, just, just read in such a way that it is clear that how will you reach to the answer. Whether two statements are correct, whether the question is an MCQ out of four, one is correct. Whether the question is of multiple response, which may be a situation where there could be three, two correct answers. So you have to consider that whether the question is of what type so that you know how to come up with the answers. So the first thing here is cover the whole syllabus. For section A, please, please don't predict things. You have to cover the whole syllabus. Now my portal content is complete. 100%. My guidance, the way I guide these research students by giving them the planners how to achieve uh, things, how to cover up things is one thing that helps students in order to uh, pass. So cover the whole syllabus. There are certain chapters that I will specify. You should read for section especially. Secondly, remember a basic uh, average in your mind. Because every OT is of two marks, so 1.8 is the average, which means you have 3.6 minutes per one objective test question. Now, now here I'll discuss the smart approach of solving the paper. And what is that? <clears throat> you will agree with me that it is not possible for you to solve each and every question considering 3.6 minutes. You cannot keep a watch in front of you and say, come on, let's start. Stop. Let's start. Stop. No, you cannot do this. There are certain questions that will take less time. So when you're solving the examination question, if you start with section A, so there are easy OTs. Yes, easy OTs. My friends, find easy marks. Sir, are you okay? Do you think there are easy marks available in the examination? For sure. For sure there are easy marks available in the examination. So you have to find easy marks. How will, sir, we find easy marks? Easy OTs. There are certain OTs that takes less amount of time. Now, if you are able to solve one OT, which actually requires the standard time of 3.6 minutes, and you are able to solve that in one minute, 30 seconds, 1.5 minutes. So are you saving your time for some other questions? Yes. So what I say always is once you start with section A, you start in such a way that you see the question, you see if it's a theory based, it's simple, solve those. Once you are in front of a difficult section A question and you feel like it might take time, Leave it, just click the button flag for review and move on. Solve easy section A OTs first, which clearly means that if there are 15 OTs coming in section A, so I can bet on that, at least five will be easy questions. At least five into two makes 10 marks, which means for five questions, if one OT requires 3.6 minutes, so five would take 18 minutes approximately, right? 18 minutes, which means you have 18 minutes to solve those five OTs. Now just imagine if you're able to solve those easy theoretical OTs requiring 18 minutes and you're able to solve those in 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 14 minutes, still you are saving four, six, 
8 minutes and gaining complete 10 marks which means this is what you have to learn this is what you have to practice at home and all these things are done when you solve mocks that is why wifi is different that is why wifi gives you two mocks to judge yourself so what i was saying my friends is that if you are able to gain 10 marks in 10 minutes 10 marks in 10 minutes which means each mark in one minute means you are in a very good position you saved your eight minutes and you grabbed more marks that is what i'm talking about smart paper solving technique and this clearly shows that you are giving yourself a better chance to pass listen keep this in your mind 100 person paper will not be in your grip it's not that whatever you see wow i know this man it's so easy no it will not happen there will be some bouncer questions heavy bouncer questions there will be certain penalty shootouts that you will not be able to hold the ball you're a goalkeeper so fast kick 10 marks 15 marks might be difficult yes accept it accept it what our technique is we need to grip easy marks because the minimum what i want is 100 no the minimum what i want is 50 so first my target is to grab 50 so as i said in section a ot's solve easy ot's first do come back to the difficult ones and once you come back later on with the remaining amount of time for the remaining questions mentally you are relaxed you know the major marks you have secured already just imagine again if section a is of 30 marks and you were able to grab 10 marks 10 easy marks in 10 minutes so let's do a quick maths here this means you you have 30 marks 30 marks into 1.8 if i do so you have 54 minutes for section aot's out of those 54 if you are able to grab 10 marks in 10 minutes so you are left with 44 minutes for the remaining 20 marks don't you like this 44 minutes for remaining 20 marks and in that 20 if you further split that to half which means you need at least 10 from the remaining 20 so this means five correct ot's you have to do five correct ot's which means if you are if you're just targeting the remaining five correct ot's and you grab 10 more marks so you have 44 minutes to solve five easy ot's the other additional five ot's i'm talking about which means you are able to grab 20 marks in no time wow that's psychological benefit you get and this is what is not discussed in the market i know i teach others teach we complete the course but what about the technique this is the technique so i hope you will learn from my techniques and more techniques i will be publi publishing very frequently from now on on my linkedin my facebook and my youtube channel and also on the wifi's social medias so coming back to 3.6 minutes per month go with easy ot's first after that for fill in the blanks i always say students students very 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 easily lose marks and how by not rounding off to correct decimal places everything is correct they don't know how to round off to nearest thousand how to round off to nearest millions and because of this stupid mistake they lose easy two marks please don't repeat this mistake again and again if you have done this if you have suffered this in december 2022 don't repeat in march learn 
गो टू योर मैथ टीचर जस्ट गूगल इट और आस्क मी वी विल गाइड यू बट प्लीज डोंट लूज इज ई मार्क्स ओके सो दीज द दीज आर वेरी वैल्यूएबल मिलियन डॉलर टेक्निक्स एंड टिप्स दैट आई एम गिविंग यू आई होप यू आर लिस्टिंग मी केयरफुली आई होप यू आर नोटिंग इट डाउन प्लीज प्लीज नोट ऑल दीज थिंग्स दिस इज वॉट you need to take care before you attempt the next paper for narrative ot's i have already explained this very clearly that for narrative ot's you need to master them there are distractors given to you distractors given to you means if this is an mcq question so out of four obviously three are wrong now in those three two generally are out of the box so actually is it's 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 a fight between the correct option and the distractor which you think okay this is also the answer so you to decide between the correct and the distractor and that is what you can do by having strong concepts strong concepts you know in ot's in mcqs or in ot's what i always emphasize in my live sessions in my recorded sessions that the focus should not be on finding the one correct statement the focus should be on finding why the other three are wrong if we set this level for ourselves that we should know why the other three are wrong then you will not do things wrong so don't be afraid of the statements that you are not sure about concepts build your concepts but again there are certain smart techniques like you can guess things by looking at the options if you're dead sure about the two statement that are correct and looking at the option it gets sometime clear that okay the other two are two are wrong no harm in that no harm in that okay <coughs> section b tips there are few which are common the first one is about the fill in the blank in section b also we have fill in the blank but other than that what is the difference in a and b section a is about what isolated questions isolated questions what is section b it's not about isolated questions section b is about scenario based ot's there is a case study given followed by five ot's now my students what you need to ensure that you don't do this mistake is what students think that okay let's solve this like an isolated ot that as we are doing in section a no there are certain things that you have to refer to the scenario information given in the scenario must be applied when you are solving these ot's i always give a very common example i'll just repeat here for example it's about throughput accounting and everybody knows that if you increase the selling price <coughs> throughput accounting ratio <coughs> will improve right if you increase the selling price it's a valid option but just in case if in the scenario first two lines they have mentioned that the market is mature there is a high competition and no room for changing the price now if you solve the ot relating to that scenario and they are asking you the options to improve tpr and one option is to increase the selling price this clearly 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 means you have to say no but in general section you would say yes but in section b because of the restriction the scenario because they mentioned that <coughs> you cannot increase the price this is not the valid option for the company so actively actively read the scenario this is what the message is actively see the scenario examiner has mentioned this lot and lot of times that please actively read the scenario and make sure that you 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 use that information for those ot's so i hope this also will be useful yeah the benchmark is to complete in 18 minutes 
1.8 minutes criteria, 18 minutes. Yes, you, you, you should try to solve in 18 minutes. But again, there are three OTs, <coughs> 10, 10, 10, sorry, uh, three MTQs, 10, 10, 10. It's not that every MTQ will be difficult or it will be easy. You have to find easy MTQs. You have to find easy case studies first. Solve that easy case study first, which means anything that you need to solve in 18 minutes, you were able to solve in 14 minutes. You have four spare minutes for other case study. You can adjust your time. Yes, all the three case studies will not be difficult. At least one, at least one will be easy. So that is where my smart working will come into play. That is where I'll target that easier MTQ or section B case study and grab marks within less time. You know, this is a smart way to pass the exam. And this is something which is, which is not workable. It's not that. I have used it in the past. Many students of use, do use this, this all and they pass. But if you expect that you will be able to control the things the way I'm mentioning here in the examination, the first time you are applying an examination, you are mistaken by that. You need to do rehearsals, rehearsals and rehearsals and rehearsals. When? Not after the paper. From today, from tomorrow, till the examination, whichever question you solve, note down the time. Note down the time. Keep time in your mind, whether it's section A, B or C. When you appear in mocks, if you enroll with us and you appear in mocks, two mocks are there. <coughs> Do the rehearsal there. We give you assignments. At WIFI, we give assignments. So those who will join now, they will be eligible for two to three assignments. When you solve assignments, you need to time bound yourself. Similarly, the way I mentioned here. So I hope these ticks, these tricks, these tips and tricks will be very useful. Make sure you do note these things down. Section C has their own challenges. And what are those? As I mentioned earlier, people are not able to understand the question requirements. My way of explaining is to find verbs and objects. What is a verb? As always say, explain, state, briefly discuss, evaluate, assess. These are verbs. Every verb, every verb has a different meaning. So first of all, understand what explain means. What I write in discuss, in explain, I tell the reason why. In discuss, I cover both sides of the argument. I should know the difference. <coughs> so verbs actually give you the message what needs to be done. I repeat, what needs to be done. They indicate you what to do, what needs to be done. Explain tells you what needs to be done. Briefly state tells you what needs to be done. Discuss will tell you what needs to be done. You should know the difference. For that, we, we have a very useful document attached on the portal by the name of examinable verb and you can read and just difference, understand the difference. Even students can Google that as well. Secondly, identifying verbs will not only indicate you what to do, it will also indicate in how much detail you have to go into. When the verb is state, so you don't get into the details of whys. You just mention that. State the advantages of ABC costing. You just state the advantage. But when it comes to explain the advantages, you tell why. You tell why this is an advantage of ABC. Why? So as I said, verbs not only indicate what to do, but also indicate in how much detail you have to go into, how much in depth you have to write about, like state, less, explain, more. You write more. And also considering the marks available, 
then you go into the amount of details. So I explain always to my students how to handle theoretical OTs. I have done this in my webinars, in my classes, how to break the verbs, how to find verbs and, and, and how to break the marks according to that. Then not just verbs, you also find out the objects. Now what is object? Like state the advantages of ABC costing. So state is the verb. Now what is the object? Object means the core thing that is being asked. Object means something on which you have to apply the verb. So the question is state the advantages of activity based costing. Now here what is the object? Are you thinking object is activity based costing? No. <coughs> the object is advantages. Now here if you start with the definition of ABC, you are wasting your time. If you think, let's start with a very good background, examiner will get to know so uh, intelligent I am, useless, crap, wasting time. The answer should be about advantages. The answer should be according to the object. According to the object. So object is advantages to the point just mention advantages it says state so less detail about advantages it says explain so more details in relation to those advantages explain why this is an advantage then look for the extra requirement in a in in one question and that is by the word and like for example Discuss the problems of rolling budget. Discuss is a verb. Problems is the object about rolling budgets. And <coughs> suggest an alternative. So after this word and it is giving you a clear idea that there are two objects. Now if the question is of six marks, solving one in the best possible way will not give you the marks for the other object will not give you marks. So if there are two objects, you have to mention both and I do discuss, I do explain how to draft the answer. You can even use two subheadings like problems of rolling budget, one subheading, under this you can write about problems, second heading, alternative and then mention the alternative. Examiner loves such kind of a method of answering. Because it gives examiner the idea that if I ask two objects and these are the two headings I have. Perfect. Note down million dollar tips I am giving today. So to grab complete marks, you have to answer all the objects. And up to what extent, verb will tell you whether state or explain. Remember you have 36 minutes here, there are two questions, I say start with easy requirements. Start section C with easy requirements. I will not say about questions here, but I would only say that out of 40 marks in section C, at least 10 to 15 are easy, at least 10 to 15 are easy. Easy definitions, easy linking, easy calculations, grab those man. Don't be worried about what you don't know. <coughs> don't you worried about what you don't know in paper. Just make sure what you know, you grab maximum marks on, in that. That's it. It's a million dollar saying by Rizwan Mania. Don't be worried about what you don't know in the paper. Just be worried about what you know, you grab complete marks. So here again easy requirements and like this you will be able to handle the paper well in examination. So I hope these will work really well for you people, section based techniques and now coming towards the, the very important area of spreadsheet and that pertains normally with the calculations. 
there are students who do mention literally that they say we use calculators in spreadsheet. What are you doing? It's a big, 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 big sin. <coughs> How can you expect examiner to pass you if you have done the calculations on calculator and you're inputting the figure in Excel? What stupidity is this? Every working should be done on spreadsheet. A spreadsheet is the most powerful tool and you are lucky that you have this tool in, in today's examination environment. If you don't think, come to me, I'll tell you. If nobody told, tell, if nobody mentioned you how to use spreadsheet, you wasted your time. I'll tell you. This is the most powerful tool. You can save time. You can solve things early. You can solve things much, much, much early. If you know how to use spreadsheet smartly, smartly, smartly. Again, smart working. Spreadsheet is smart working. And I do mention, I have mentioned a lot to my students and they know the difference. For theory, it's not an English language paper. Use simple English. Don't impress examiner by very high level vocab that you yourself don't know. Okay, simple English. <clears throat> now, after this, what are the key things that we need to sum up here? As you saw, everywhere I mentioned easy marks. Grab easy marks. Grab easy marks. Grab easy marks. Students who do not grab easy marks, they create difficulty for themselves to pass the paper if you are not able to grab easy marks. Okay, effective time management, as I mentioned, make sure your time management is important. Once you find easy marks, you will start saving the time. And complete solving of the paper, whether it's MTQs, OTs or Section C, complete solving of the paper is important. So three, t three uh, key takeaways, find easy marks and solve those. It will help to improve time management and solve the entire paper. So if you find easy marks, it will benefit you in solving the paper complete and within time. Complete and within time. Wow. So note down easy marks, easy marks. And that I always explain, will again explain once you join the batch, you will get to know. So make sure that you do learn those things. Now coming towards the very important last area, and that is how do we teach at WIFI? Our learning methodology is unique because our recorded sessions are based on learning glass technology, which is unique, which is different, and through animations, we teach you. Then we have live classes. So those who will join now, they are left with, I think, two live classes. Four already done, so they can watch the recordings of that. I think three live classes, if I'm not wrong. Three live classes, yeah, three, not two. So three, they will watch through the recordings. Three, they can join live. And that's the best part. The more you join live sessions, the better you interact, and you need to create the difference of recording and live as well. The notes are there for you to help you. We have a very good TTA model. TTA model, what is that? First T is the testing platform we have. Now what is testing platform? The OT is available on testing platform similarly according to your examination. There are hundreds of OTs that you can practice using on testing platform. Second is test yourself. On the portal, you will see this section, test yourself, where the time limit is given, and we are asking you to test yourself by solving within the time limit so that you practice about time management. And then you can watch the video answer. Then comes the assignments that we share with you people. Now those who uh, will join after reset, I think there are three assignments that are left that you will be uh, able to solve and will mark those. The first three have been done. Okay, <clears throat> this is TTA model. Then comes mock exam. As I said, two mocks are part of this package. One will be the live mock with live debrief and script marking. 
the other will be recorded mock with recorded debrief with no marking or the second mock. But it's best to do rehearsals. After that, at the end, we have a grand revision where I uh, give you a recap of the entire course before the examination in two to three hours, which again is a game, game changing session for you people. Not only this is grand revision, uh, but in this revision, we also include the webinars that we conduct. So there are free three days webinars also for you people, which you can join and practice more and more with me. Those will start in Feb. Okay, so this is the learning methodology. This is why WIFI is different to others. Now, uh, I would want you people, if you are interested in joining our recent batch and want to learn easy ways to pass PM, you want, you want to make PM easy for you. So, don't wait. Come here and join WIFI. This is the number of our team. You can WhatsApp them at this number and they will respond to you. Uh, for your enrollment if you're interested. So it's plus nine two three four one nine double two one three eight seven. Just WhatsApp them as number and they will get back to you and become part of my batch and see the difference in your studies this time with Wifi. Okay. So I hope this is clear to all of you. <coughs> now, uh, do we have any questions in the chat box? Chat box. Okay. You can ask any questions or queries if you have. You can even contact at my number later on at this number for personal uh, suggestions if you want. Uh, this is the number of our enrollment team. You can contact them and be part of my batch and then see the difference in your approach. So I hope uh, this, this session went well and it was informative for you. Guys, please share your feedbacks in the comment section. How was the session? Did you learn things? understood the technique and yes, smart paper solving technique, please. Uh, reason for not passing if you're doing everything right, it, this is what you think everything is being done right, okay? This is for you think that everything is done right. Obviously, there are mistakes that you are doing. So you need to reflect on that uh, and this is done by taking any mentorship or you can ask me or anyone else but you need to realize that there are mistakes. So you cannot comprehend those any superior person like a mentor if you just submit them to check an answer then you will get to know whether you are lacking. Okay. Now guys, this is <coughs> the end of the session. I hope the session went well. What do you think? Was it useful? The techniques, yes or no? And if you implement those, definitely it will help you. So please, please, please do share your feedback in the comment section and hope to see you in the live classes in our recent batch very soon. And let's connect together. I'll share the plan. We'll give you the idea. We'll guide you completely how to prepare yourself in the remaining days. You are my responsibility if you join and feel the difference and I hope you will pass. So best of luck. Thank you very much for attending this orientation session. Hope this works well for you and you learn from this and yes, don't forget to share this uh, to other, other friends so that maximum PM students can benefit and learn the specific smart paper solving technique. Until then, take care. Have a nice week. See you soon. Bye.